In this lecture, we'll talk about working with records in Salesforce objects. Example, accounts, contacts, opportunities, and cases. When we work with these in Apex, we have a fancy new way to call them as S objects. You can think of them as Salesforce objects. What are S objects anyway? Like primitives and collections that we talked about in earlier lectures, S objects are like another Salesforce data type. You can think of an S object like a variable container that holds a particular type of data, like a Salesforce record. You might be wondering why on earth we need a new name for something that we already know. It's because objects in Apex mean something different than objects in the Salesforce point-and-click environment. So I'll put it this way: variables are like containers. The container is the S object. In Apex, S objects refer to a variable that holds some kind of Salesforce record from a standard or a custom object. You may be wondering why I'm so excited to be talking about S objects. Well, it's because they give us a way to store an entire Salesforce record in a single variable. We can also use S objects to hold data about new records before we add them into our Salesforce database. If you look at this piece of code, with just those few characters, we have created a variable called A and made it a new account S object. Let's break it down. Account A. This is declaring a new variable called A of the S object data type, but not just any generic S object. We specifically want the variable to hold an account record. This is an assignment operator. New account. This is what we are assigning our new variable. That is, we are assigning it to be a new account. But our new variable A is not very special yet. It doesn't hold anything other than an empty record. This record doesn't even live in the database yet. It just lives in our Apex code. If we were to run this, it wouldn't affect our Salesforce data at all. So let's talk about how this would work with a custom Salesforce object. Say we had a custom book object in Salesforce to store all our favorite books. I went ahead and created a custom object called book with the following custom fields: title, author, genre, publish date, number of pages, and average rating. As an admin, you probably know the API name for all custom objects and fields are suffixed with double underscore c. So, what if we wanted to create a new book? Book B equals new book. It's exactly same as our first block of code, but here we are using the custom object's API name, book double underscore c. But what if I wanted to create a new book record and insert it into our book object? Well, first we need to know what the fields are. So let's look in our Salesforce setup. Here. You can see that in addition to our name field, we also have created five custom fields: author, genre, publish date, number of pages, and average rating. I'm using the API names on purpose because that's what we'll be using in Apex. So imagine we had a new book that we wanted to add to our book object. To create a new variable which will hold this new book, our code would look like this. I've spread the code out so it's a little easier to read. Let's break it down. What we are doing with lines two to six are assigning a value to each of these fields in our Salesforce book object. First, we are initializing a new S object. Then we are assigning a value to each of these fields in our Salesforce book object: name, author, genre, publish date. This creates a date, September 16, 2014, and number of pages. Note that in Apex we use single quotes around string and date and time data types, but not around numbers or boolean values. You can see the difference in lines two versus six. We have single quotes around the title field, while we do not put them around the numeric number of pages value. We have an error because we missed a quote around the string field. Getting an error message is not a bad thing. I know that might sound strange, but take it from me: if you code, you'll see many error messages. 
it's just part of the journey and it'll make you a better coder. You can see an example of the error below. At first glance, this may look like some gibberish, but it's actually telling us what's wrong. Our database is expecting the field to be a string and it did not have quotes. Not only that, but it's also telling us where we made the mistake, line 4. So while error messages may get a bad rap, they are really just trying to help us out. Let me fix this. A quick question. Do you think we have a record in our database yet? The answer is almost, but not quite. What we have done is store our new book into an S object variable called B. That's just hanging out, waiting for further instructions. We need to take one last step to insert it into our Salesforce database. We'll take that step using the Apex data manipulation language or DML. You might be asking, how many languages do I need to know how to code on force.com? But this one is super simple. You're going to be amazed at how simple it is. By the way, the answer to your question is three. Apex, DML, and Sockel. One step at a time, as you'll see. DML barely counts. There are more you can learn like Visual Force, but at a minimum, you want to know these three. But back to our coding. All we need to do to add this record to our Salesforce database is use the following line of code. Insert B. It's that simple. That tiny piece of DML will insert our brand new 0 to 1 book into our database. After running this code, we can see our wonderful new book in our book object. I'm not exactly following best practices in my Apex code above. The problem isn't that code won't work. It will. But it'll work fine as long as we are adding small number of records. With this code, for every record we are creating, we are making a call to the database. If we import 100 records, then we are still making 100 calls to the database. It would not work if we are adding many, many records. Like, for example, if we were doing a data import. This is because of the multi-tenant architecture. There are thousands of companies using Salesforce. All those instances share resources on the cloud in terms of CPU, power, and memory. If one developer writes code that takes up lots of resources, it would affect the other instances. Therefore, Salesforce has come up with something called governor limits. Think of them like boundaries for now. I'll expand on them later. We know now that we can use S objects and DML to insert a record into Salesforce, but that's just the beginning. We can do all sorts of things with them beyond that, including querying your Salesforce database and storing those results in a collection of S objects, using this collection to make a custom record list page, modify the data in collection and send it back to Salesforce to update your records, loop through your list to create child records related to the parent record in your S object collection. You have seen how to create a single S object variable to hold a single new record and how to insert that into the database. You also know that inserting a single record in this way isn't the best practice and you're also intrigued about when you'll learn to bulkify your code. In the next lecture, we'll talk about another interesting concept called SOCL, in short, for Salesforce Object Query Language.